isn't this exciting, guys? Another video from your famous favorite science teacher. You're only one right now. So we want to talk about electrical circuits now. And a reminder, mainly for the academic kids, applied guys, you're more than welcome to give this a shot and uh, see what you can digest, but uh, not mandatory for you guys. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, and again, hopefully you check the notes, is we're going to talk about the two main types of circuits, and we're going to identify the different symbols, and then we're going to transition into the math stuff. Okay, so the first thing I think I should show you guys is a simple series circuit, okay? In a series circuit, the electricity can only flow along one path, okay? So I'm gonna draw a series circuit. Maybe throw a switch in there. Actually, that's good enough. Okay, so there's a simple series circuit, okay? This symbol is a cell. You can find that in the notes. If you wanted to provide a little more juice, you could do two cells, or three cells, or four cells. You get the idea, right? And that, that would be kind of the strength of your system for power, okay? Call that a resistor. It restricts the flow of electricity. This is kind of a general symbol for a lamp or a light. Okay, something that draws power, like a load is another uh, term we use. A switch. The switch is open right now, so the electricity cannot flow through. Okay, if we close it, the electricity can flow through. Okay. So that's the basics for a for a series circuit. A couple other symbols that we don't use a lot would be an and meter, and meter, sorry, and a voltmeter, basically tools that we would uh, measure those units in. And you guys remember that symbol as our resistance symbol, so an, an ohm meter to see how much resistance there is in a circuit. Okay. I'll leave that up there for now, and then we'll kind of compare it to a parallel circuit. A parallel circuit has multiple paths for the electricity to flow, okay? So instead of just going up and around, it can go up, kind of down one loop, or it could go down another loop. So you could have as many sort of pathways as would be practical for the circuit, okay? Series circuits, one path. Parallel circuits, a second path or more, okay? Press pause if you want to get that down. All this should be kind of added to your cheat sheet, right? Last unit, we had a periodic table that was super useful as we worked our way through the unit. This time, have your cheat sheet with all the stuff we did last video and just keep adding to it, okay? So this is uh, probably the final piece of mathematical sort of data I want you to add to it. And it's basically how current, voltage and resistance interact with each other in the two different types of circuits, okay? So in a series circuit, so that is, we just did it right, one of these little fellas, only one path. In a series circuit, the total current, T is for total, I is our symbol for current, the total current is actually the same everywhere. That's what these mean, okay? It means where there's different things happening in the circuit. So maybe we'll actually draw a couple loads here, okay? Sometimes we put a circle around them. You can imagine those are three light bulbs in the circuit. It means the current at one 
two, and three is the same. Okay, the current's the same everywhere in a series circuit. Okay. The total voltage, and remember, think back to the last set of notes with those triangular equations now. This is what we're kind of talking about. The total voltage behaves a little differently. Okay, it's actually the sum of the different voltages. Okay, so they all add up to a total voltage, as does resistance. Okay, R1 plus R2 plus R3. So that's the behavior of those major components in a series circuit. Okay, Parall parallel is a little different. In a parallel circuit, you're going to have your different paths for the current to flow, right? So we could have a lamp there, a lamp there, and a lamp there. Now this is interesting because we see these types of circuits in our houses, right? And hopefully you've picked up on the fact that in a series circuit, if you want one thing on, everything has to be on because the electricity flows through the one path only. In this room I'm in, for instance, our small little uh, basement living room, I've got the lights on right now, but the TV's off at the far end. I'm pointing at something you can't see, okay? I've got the tailgater hooked up there and a couple different things my kids play with. But the point is, some things can be on and some things can be off. So we're definitely looking at parallel circuits throughout this room, okay? Our current total in a parallel circuit is the addition of each individual current, okay? The voltage total is actually the same everywhere. And this last one I find is always super tricky with you guys. Uh, I'm going to put it on here though and it might be like that one question you'd get maybe on a final exam to really challenge you. It's only tricky because it's because it's a fraction relationship. So one over the resistance total is one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. And when you get to examples like that, my suggestion is still to sub in your data you can convert fractions to real numbers. Sometimes they're easier to work with, okay? And go that route. And hopefully you guys have some experience with like cross multiplication to get rid of variables and stuff. Okay, but that's the main thing I wanted to cover right now, okay? So make sure you get all that down on your cheat sheet and hit pause because we're gonna practice a few actual circuit examples now, okay? All right, so you're gonna wanna get this worksheet ready to go, okay? Hopefully you guys can print stuff out at home. If you can't, you can always call it up and then kind of write out stuff to the side, okay? So we'll be asking you to determine the unknown variables based on the diagram, okay? So I'm gonna sketch this one out real quickly here. We've got something happening there. We've got something happening there. Nice, simple circuit. And we, you know, we have a bunch of cells going on here, okay? And we're given the current at one as 0.2 amps. We're given the voltage at one as 1.5 volts and the voltage at two is 1.2 volts. And we're asked to find the current at two, and we're asked to find the total voltage. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with, okay? You'd wanna go right back to that cheat sheet data we just gave you, okay? 
And my suggestion is to always figure out the easy stuff first, okay? You know that in a series circuit, one of these variables is the same everywhere. So if we're given it once, it's the answer for everything, okay? So for a series circuit, we're looking at our first set of, of uh, cheat sheet notes, and we know that the current total is the same everywhere, okay? So this current here has to be the same as this current here. Okay, so the quick and easy answer is simply to put 0 0.2 amps there because that's kind of the electrical law. Okay, we're then asked to find the voltage total. The voltage total for a series circuit is V1 plus V2. Do we have those? Yes, we do. Okay, so we have 1.5 plus 1.2. Ia, what do you got for that? 2.7 volts. Okay, that would be your answer for that. Okay, want to do one more example here just for fun? Sure. So the second one we'll set up. cells here again and we're going over to a lamp to a lamp and that's it so not too much more difficult okay oh I probably should have done a parallel circuit for you guys I'll leave it for you as a challenge okay so what are we given here and what are we not given we're asked to find the current at one we're given, ooh, this is kind of messed up here. I'm going to try to write it a little more. I'm going to try to put the data closer to the points. Okay, anyways, that goes with that. Okay, we're given the current at 2 as 0 0.7 amps. We're given the voltage at 1 as 1 1.2 volts. We're not given the voltage at 2. I3. We're, I don't see a little squiggly here, but let's add it so we're not confused. We're asked for a current at I3. And we're given a total voltage of 3 volts. Okay, so that's cool. Lots of information, okay? The first thing I would suggest again is let's see what the easiest data is to set up. Okay, so we're dealing with a series circuit. So we're dealing with our first set of equations again. If we're given the current anywhere, then we're basically given the current everywhere, okay? And we're given a current right here. I2 is 0.7 amps. If it's 0.7 amps there, it's 0.7 amps there, and it's 0.7 amps there. Okay, so there's the easy marks, okay? Now for voltage, we have to figure that out, okay? So for voltage, one point, sorry. Just thinking out loud here, guys. I've got 0.7. I'm given a total voltage. Oh, well, again, let's just work through the steps I'm teaching you. For total voltage, we know that it's V1 plus V2 plus V3, right? If there's a V3, okay? We know our total voltage is 3 volts. We know our V1 is 1.2 volts. And our V2, we don't know. Okay? V2 
is going to be R3 minus R1.2. Got it? 1.8 volts. Okay. I think that's a good place to leave off for you guys. You got a lot to think about. Okay. Uh, try it. The sequence of kind of events here again is have a nice thorough cheat sheet, understand Ohm's law, understand these relationships, and then it's basically like solving a puzzle. Okay, start with the easy stuff first and work your way through to the more complicated stuff. Okay, so the work that would be left for you uh, is to try to complete this worksheet see what you can come up with and then next week we'll take up all the electricity math that was previously provided okay and that and uh, then we'll transition into the, into the more qualitative part of the unit which uh, is kind of fun and you guys will research different ways we make electricity and prepare some sort of a presentation on one of them okay that's it for now thanks guys